Hey gang, I got an offer for you today from LinkedIn. As business-to-business marketers, your needs are unique. B2B buying cycles are long and your customers face incredibly complex decisions. Isn't it time you had a marketing platform built specifically for you? LinkedIn ads empower marketers with solutions for you and your customers. LinkedIn ads allow you to build the right relationships, drive results, and reach your customers in a respectful environment. On LinkedIn, you have direct access to build relationships with decision makers. Of the 875 million users on the network, 180 million are senior level executives, 10 million are C-level executives. You will also be able to drive results with targeting and measuring with their tools built specifically for B2B. And best of all, they work. Audiences exposed to brand messages on LinkedIn are six times more likely to convert. LinkedIn ads also rank number one for security, community, and ad experience as part of the Business Insider's Digital Trust Study. Make B2B marketing everything you can be and get $100 credit. It's $100 credit on your next campaign. Go to linkedin.com slash MPN to claim your credit. It's linkedin.com slash MPN. P-N. Terms and conditions apply. Entrepreneurs Enigma is a podcast for the ups and downs of entrepreneurship. So the wins and the fails that we all face being entrepreneurs and how we learn from adversity. Every week I talk to a different entrepreneur with a story to tell. I'm Seth Goldstein. Come with me on the journey. This is Entrepreneurs Enigma. Let's get started. Hey everyone, on the show today we have Carrie Campion of God Save the Serp. Yes, it sounds like a rock or heavy metal band, but it is a copywriting outfit that she runs just north of Madrid. She is a Northern Irish transplant to Spain, and we talk about what it's like to be an entrepreneur, have a young child, and be able to have the flexibility that you can have as being an entrepreneur. And a different perspective is brought up, which is really interesting. It's not about the hustle culture. And I think that's something we need to highlight here, is entrepreneurship does not equal hustle. Entrepreneurship means what you make it out to be and how you want it. So I hope you like it. Without further ado, Carrie Campion. Hey, everyone. Welcome to another edition of the Entrepreneurs Enigma podcast. We have a great episode today. Talking to Carrie Campion of God Save the Serb. Oh, <laughs> oh, it's like a heavy metal thing. Carrie is an SEO copywriter, originally from Northern Ireland, transplanted herself into arid Spain, got herself sunburned in October. Yeah, really badly. <laughs> oh my God. It's been a day for her, but that is exactly a good example of entrepreneurship is that you can get sunburned in October. That's the reason why you're going to be <laughs> Not exactly that, but the idea is that every day is unique. Every right. day, you know, throws you a curveball. You have to kind of either hit it or miss it or whatever. Don't talk to me about baseball analogies. I'm not no good at sports. <laughs> but the idea is that, you know, Carrie, how long have you been doing um, SEO copywriting for? So, like, I mean, I been doing it sort of like officially the last kind of like year and a half um but i sort of started my own kind of business with probably yeah not like two and a half years ago and i actually started with something completely different that uh-huh. actually led pivot. into copywriting it was it was a pivot yeah because <laughs> i was actually um i was an english teacher actually before oh. and, Where? Uh, in spain yeah, in spain uh kind of working with the language academy and then i went on my own just teaching people like one-on-one Mm-hmm. It was literally like, you know, people would literally just come to my house and we would have our classes there. And it... this is English as a second language, right? Not yeah. English literature. Exactly. It's a huge market in Spain. The ESL industry is just enormous here. And um, I guess I kind of, there's a few things I didn't like about it. I mean, I, I think I just kind of like, um, above all, like in that format, it was just, it was weird. And I think this is probably just also a very entrepreneurial thing. The work came to me too easily. <laughs> <laughs> yeah it was like oh you're a native speaker of english can you teach me english like that was literally the first thing out of people's mouths you know bothered me which is bizarre i mean imagine i mean i, I wish i had that problem now oh work comes to me too easily um but, exactly <laughs> but i think i did want more of a challenge and then as well it was very much like i mean we're always exchanging time for money in some respect but it was literally oh, yeah. like you know an hour of my time was like 15 euro do you know what i mean like that yeah that that hits the ceiling pretty quickly 
Um, yeah, it's you're, like, yeah, you're high demand. You're in high demand, but low rate. And it's like, oh, exactly. I'm going to have bigger clients, less clients, but bigger clients. Right, exactly. And yeah, I just, yeah, I just kind of got, maybe just a little bit burnt out from it, a little bit kind of fed up with that format. So then actually me and my husband, we moved to France for two years and I was pregnant. And I kind of thought, well, this is the perfect time to start something new. And that was, I wanted to sort of start a blog. I wanted to start um, kind of like an online teaching business. And that was when I sort of first started to get into like content marketing, into SEO, into uh, social media marketing and all that kind of stuff. And I kind of got to the point where I was doing that for a while. And I sort of thought, when I actually came to the time where I'd had my daughter, I was kind of coming out of, well, maternity leave, quote unquote. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And I was, I was thinking about going back, you know, to work. And I was kind of like, I've had way more fun just like with the online stuff. And I actually don't mm -hmm. want to retake classes. Like I actually don't want to do that anymore. Yeah. And then I kind of found out like this thing called copywriting was a thing. And I was like, wait, that's a thing? People pay you for that? Like what? <laughs> right, exactly. I was like, wait, this is a thing? People pay for this? I'd always kind of written like fiction and things like that. Or I'd always been freelance articles here and there, you know. So yeah, it was just kind of a way I was like, oh my God, well, I need to just do do this now. I can't believe I didn't know that this existed. And then I, you know, obviously did like training, my diploma in copywriting and stuff. And then from there, then I got into like the SEO side of it because the thing I which is a whole different piece. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And definitely went into like a rabbit hole because I think it's hard to know where my role starts and where it ends. And I'm like pretty firm with that. You know, it's like bank building, not my job. Technical SEO, oh. not my job. You know, anything like that, not my job. And, you know, I can point you in the direction of people whose job it is, but, mm -hmm. you know, that's, that's, not that's your, job. Net, your niche, your niche is the content. Right, exactly. So I just was like, you know, like the, the content marketing side of things, the copy side of things, that's where I step in, <laughs> you know. It, but there's people who kind of want you to be like a one-stop shop for everything because they don't have a lot of budget. They, you know, might be quite small business owners. And I'm just like, yeah, but, you know, one person can't take on all these roles. It's no. impossible. <laughs> Even I don't. I mean, I offer all that. But like, you know, you know, Nicole. You know, and I use the cool yeah. content. I, you know, maybe, maybe I'll use you for some content, you know, that kind of thing. <laughs> and the idea is that, you know, you hire, you do what you're good at, you hire for the rest. Right, you exactly. Know? And I was it, just like, I'm not yeah. splitting my attention with all these other things that are like irrelevant. And I, I'm not, I mean, I'm not going to be able to offer all that stuff. Even if I wanted to, like, it's just way too much for one person. I would have a mental breakdown, you know, <laughs> like. Absolutely, exactly. So, but to be an entrepreneur, what was the scariest thing? I love asking this question. What was the scariest thing when you decided to be an entrepreneur at full time? What was it the scariest thing you had, like, you realized? Uh, I think like for me, I actually think I know like right off the bat, because whenever I was doing like the English teaching thing, I never really felt like I was starting a business. I never really felt like a business owner or an entrepreneur like that. Those words just like weren't in my vocabulary at all. Um, it was just basically like just scraping by and just like making money and it felt very like hustly that kind of vibe um but i remember i was like this is back when i was in when we were living in paris and i'm sitting there like we had this nice little like a balcony in our apartment and from that balcony you could see like the light from the eiffel tower just kind of like whizzing round Ooh. yeah you know, it was really nice i couldn't see the eiffel tower but i could see like the it like emits a beam of light yeah the spotlight yeah <laughs> like, yeah and I was just like, I always used to just go there to like think when I was having like existential crises. And I was like, oh my God, I can't believe I've spent so long, you know, becoming a teacher, like really, you know, working with all these students. And I really put like a lot of effort into, you know, I did a lot of training and stuff. I've been building up this website, building up this audience. I'd had a podcast as well that people really loved. Mm -hmm. And I'm just going to walk away from it all to start this brand new thing like start this new copywriting business and like I was just like oh my god I feel like it was really bittersweet because I kind of felt like a complete failure because that last sort of you know business or idea just obviously didn't pan out and I changed my mind and I think the scariest part of that was like thinking oh god like what if this doesn't work out like mm -hmm. <laughs> this is oh, yeah, 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 another no. failure to like add to the list um so yeah, that was really scary. And I think I was really afraid of telling people as well, you know, like 
I'm mm-hmm. surprised teaching going, oh yeah, I'm not doing that anymore. I think I was just really afraid of looking inconsistent and just looking like mm-hmm. this mess who didn't know what they were, what what they wanted in life. <laughs> yeah, but now, now going into it now, what, what was on the flip side, what's the most exciting thing about being an entrepreneur? I mean, you have a young daughter, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So my daughter is. Yeah, there's plenty of flexibility. Oh, she's two. Exactly. So you need the flexibility. Really yeah. It's definitely the flexibility. Like, I think as well, like, um, there's a few things for me. The flexibility, absolutely. Like, if she gets sick, I, you know, if both of us are kind of like tied to, you know, something like a nine to five or something. And it's like, oh, it's this big drama, right? Like, oh, he's going to take care of her. Or, oh, I'd take time off work. And, mm-hmm. you know, I don't need to do that. And then I think as well, like, it's it's a blessing and a curse probably, but having that freedom to execute on your creative ideas, you know, like not, mm-hmm. you know, being kind of in charge of that red tape per se, you know, where you just say, I want to do this and I can, <laughs> you know, like I can, dumb. Yeah. I can, I can start that podcast. I can start that YouTube channel. I can, you know, work with these types of clients, you know, that kind of thing. So I think for me, that's probably it. And the fact that I'm, I guess this is probably more pertinent with, um, online business is that I'm not limited to my local market Mm -hmm. like that for me it's just incredible that's super important especially being you know writing English you know I mean you did put use in very weird spots in my opinion color and (laughs) honor other than that you know I think everything's cool but that's that's, (laughs) that's the main first podcast the British you know British Irish English versus (laughs) American bastardized English Oh my God. I mean, just like, you know, sure that my accent's probably so weird to you, where I love your accent. Yeah, the <laughs> Irish accent, classic. Anyhow, when you think about entrepreneurship and you see so you're out there, you're doing it, you're you're rocking it, you know, and now now you tell us a little bit more about God saying to serve. <laughs> and what's the, what's the plan with that? Yeah, so that it, actually that domain in particular is very new. Mm-hmm. I think I only launched it in it was. I always get confused about if it was May or March. No, is it? I think it was May. It was March. No, May. Sorry, <laughs> um, uh, of this year, because yeah, I, I think I remember. I think I remember because we're in the same you know SEO for the rest of us. Right, Hi, Brandon. Hi, Brandon. You just, la- <laughs> just launched it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I had just had like a domain, carrycampion.com, which oh my god still has an under construction sign like it, it was oh, live no. I, took it, I, t- I took it down just while i was creating the new oh that's my daughter in the yeah. background you can hear oh it's fine <laughs> there she is oh, there she is Hi. 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 thank you <laughs> that's awesome but this but this is the entrepreneurial thing in general is that you yeah exactly. on a pod, and that's why i love it like originally you're saying you were going to give from the from your car which, you know, it, right, I was, it's fine too. I and mean, you're all worried about, oh, how's that goes down? I'm like, I don't care because this is entrepreneurship. It's 2 o'clock p.m. where I am in Philly and it's 8 o'clock yep. where you are in Spain. But, okay, we're entrepreneurs. We set our own schedule. It's not like, oh, no, this is overtime. No. Right. What downside of entrepreneurship, there is no overtime. There is no oh, overtime. Is. It's <laughs> the worst kind of commission, honestly. You know, if you think sales and commission, What's worse than that is you may have, you sometimes have to draw the pull from here. You don't, it's, you make it or you no. break it. Yeah. And, and I think that's kind of the scary thing, but I mean, like clearly, you know, entrepreneurship is a way for some people to, you know, to go about work. What's it like being an entrepreneur, you know, your husband's at work or, you know, for uh, with their partner here. at work. Oh, he's he, here too. Oh, I work at oh, home. Yeah. Like he, oh, your so you're on. Oh, so you're uh, obviously built. So what's that like? Here we go. What's that like? You have the little rug rat. It's like, mommy, mommy, mommy. Your husband's saying, sweetheart, I need this. You know, I, I, I can speak to that too. My wife is working upstairs. Yeah. I'm, I work in the base and my work or, or in her bedroom. So it's kind of nice to know we're in the same house, but it's like we're separate. I mean, like, what's it like being an entrepreneur with all these extra sensory things going on? Like, how do you deal with that? I mean, probably the most important thing is that our daughter goes to daycare during the day. Okay. Um, Set boundaries, imp- yeah. Yeah, it would just be impossible for me because she's just at that very needy age where you just can't take your eyes off them for a microsecond, you know. She is at, she is at daycare. So, you know, she's, she's there from eight to four, which, you know, is great. Not bad. Um, yeah. And, yeah, yeah. And then um, my husband, he works from home four days out of the week and one day he goes to the office. 
So that's, that's actually been, yeah, that's actually been really good. Because I really don't mind working from home alone, but it is nice to kind of feel like you almost have like a co-worker, which is obviously something we don't feel at all, uh, unless you actually do have like, you know, an office with employees and stuff going. But I think mm-hmm. like in general, there are people with employees and stuff, but they're still doing this. They're all still working from home. So it just makes sense. Like, why would you sit in your car mm-hmm. and eat, you know, oh, that's a very Spanish English translation there. Why would you sit in your car and just like, you know, be in a traffic jam for like 30 minutes yeah. to get there, 30 minutes back, have a little miserable lunch at the cafe, at the uh, yeah. canteen, you know, just exactly. you know, yeah. when you could just be at home and just like have all your comforts here. Yeah. So, so you said you made a point that you decided to put that boundary between you and your daughter. She's at daycare. She's learning. She's doing her entrepreneurial mm. journey on her own. You're <laughs> doing yours and all that. She's busy. You know, she's learning the way of being a kid. And what's that like, you know, having the flexibility? Like we talk about that. Everyone's like, oh, entrepreneurship, you're working, you know, you have no nine to five. It's 24 seven, round the clock, you know, hustle, hustle, hustle. But when you have kids, the hustle's the kid. Yeah, that is 100% true. I don't buy into hustle culture. I don't buy into the idea. Like, why would I have, quote unquote, created like this freedom, you know, to work 24 hours a day? Like my dream is to make as much money as possible working as little as possible, you know, and basically like even now, I mean, you know, for instance, when we were moving back from, from, uh, uh, France to Spain again, obviously I was dealing with a lot of paperwork and stuff and, you know, closing my business there and opening in here and making sure that was all. Oh, not, I forgot like, about that. It's so much mm-hmm. worse than it is in the United States. And I think it's the same actually, if you change states, you know, I think it's the same oh, really? with each of states because you have to reincorporate, mm-hmm. but I don't think you have to, I think you can leave. Yeah. Cause I have no people that incorporate in Delaware and they're, they're in Arkansas. So, yeah, right, exactly. Different. But here's like different countries. So like you really have to do it. Um, so yeah, uh, we just kind of had like this vacuum in like the middle where it was just like, okay, well, I can't really take on clients right now. So I just said, I just said, screw it. I was going to take a month off. Just, I was like, you know, because you can take a month off because I can exactly. And it's, you know, I, I've also, there's a part, maybe it was like this spring actually, where I was feeling just, I felt like an employee again, because I just had so much client work kind of lined up and it was like ongoing work as well mm-hmm. it was the kind of thing like one project off board boom it was like my whole calendar my whole day was just client work client work client work client work it's tough it, yeah so I just said like look that's not how I want to work you know because I that, I just feel like an a yin yin kind of yeah. idea like the bigger sort of vision for Gossip Surf, which is why I went for a brand name over like my own sort of personal name was I want to work with like two, three clients at a time. Cause then it's like, I can really give, you know, hundred percent, hundred and ten percent, like my focus and everything that like could just goes to them. Um, but even like one client at a time, I work with one client right now and I love it. I'm just like, yep, that's all I got going on. And that's enough to get me through. It's, it's great. Um, exactly. And then work like productize. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. Exactly. And then productize. You're playing, I do like an online course, right? Mm-hmm. Like teaching people right. how to write. I think that's really exciting is that, you know, I've tried to do it in the past and I'm like, it's just not for me, but I think it's really exciting that you're actually able to say, all right, I can do it though. I can do one-on-one, but then I can also pull a brand in, you know, from God, you know, I see if the rest of us, you know, teach your, with your knowledge and share and have it go farther, teach a person how to fish. Yeah, exactly. And I, and really it was, it's funny because like, you know, I kind of got into copywriting because it's like, whoa, there's this thing called copywriting and people will pay you to do this thing that I already do and I love. That's amazing. And that was kind of obviously where it came from. But mm-hmm. with like the kind of courses and stuff I have in mind or, um, yeah, they're actually designed for other copywriters because other copywriters kept coming to me and asking me questions and asking me, do you do any coaching? Do you do this? Do you do that? And I was like, oh, it was like kind of the first time I've, oh, I felt kind of, not pressured, that's not the right word, but, you know, kind of inspired, I guess, to actually create something because people are literally asking me for it. And it was, yeah. you know, like, it's the first time I think like the really, my market has found me, <laughs> Yeah, you know, I, rather than <laughs> it just kind of happened like so organically. And I was just like, that kind of like helps when I sort of feel like, oh, maybe I can't do this. I can't do, this. you know, the doubt kind of creeps in. Then I think like, you're doing this because people are literally asking you for it. Like, you know, it's yeah, bring it, you have bring to be a reason for it. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. 
So wrapping this up, because I know you have to, you know, possibly go snuggle with your daughter a little bit here. <laughs> I, I, she probably wants her mommy time too. But um, okay. where's the best place for people to find you? That'd be GodSaveTheSerp.com? Yeah, it would, yeah, it would be GodSaveTheSerp.com. So that's great. And you're also very active at, as God Save the Serp on Instagram. The, yeah, right, is the, real, the reels are funny. I really enjoy those. <laughs> I've only started doing them recently because I know like they, they they perform really well in terms of like reach, but I'm yeah. like I'm I'm so over watching people like point at things, you know. Yeah. <laughs> boom, boom, boom. Yeah, that's now. I was like, do. I don't want to point at things. I don't want to like dance either. You know, there's like these dance move trends and stuff. Uh, and yeah, they're pretty cool. I mean, they're pretty cool to watch, but you know, it, yeah. Yeah, but I just could do it myself. That's the thing. And then, like, but I just find myself kind of getting sucked into the vortex of reels. It's, it's all dog content as well. Like, Instagram just knows what I like. Do we keep dogs? Just, yeah, I have a German Shepherd. A big but, dog. Uh, yeah, she's a big dog. She's a big dog. I actually tripped over her earlier. I, like, fell on my face on the street. <laughs> oh, well, you tripped over your own dog. So, yeah, I did. She probably looked at you like, did. Mom, what, the, what are you doing? She's like, oh, crap, what happened? <laughs> Is I've nearly tripped over before, but today I actually, actually did. <laughs> Everyone will catch you on the flip side. And Carrie, thank you for coming on. Thank you for coming on late at night for you. So we very much appreciate that. No worries. Thanks very much for inviting me. Oh, it's all, it's, of course. That was a great show. Hey, if you're enjoying Entrepreneur's Enigma, please give us a review on the podcast directory of your choice. We're on all of them. And these reviews really help others find the show. Also, if you're getting value from the show and want to buy me a coffee, go to the show notes and click on the link to help me stay awake while I bring you more great episodes to your ears. That's in the show notes, and I look forward to the next episode. Take care, guys. You may know you're listening to this show along the Marketing Podcast Network, but did you know there are other great shows on MPN to help your business? Jonathan Gaby hosts a great podcast called Marketing Distilled. He's the master distiller. Jonathan, tell us what these fine folks are going to get out of listening. On Marketing Distilled, you'll hear from industry experts and me to learn about more marketing things and taking those complex things and distill them down into actionable strategies or tactics. Amazing. Where can people subscribe? You can find the show at marketingpodcast.net or search for Marketing Distilled wherever you get your podcast. You heard him. Go subscribe. This podcast is heard along the Marketing Podcast Network. For more great marketing podcasts, visit marketingpodcasts.net.